Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today we're working on a C5 Corvette, and it has some show of wear and tear in its age. It has water spots. It has deep etching from the water spots and the deposits. It has scratches, swirls, love marks. It has just about everything you can think of that would accumulate over the years. We're going to correct that with the rotary polisher. We're going to cut and finish with the rotary in this short series. This is a beautiful car, a beautiful machine, so it's going to be worth the time and effort put into it. And I'm excited to get started and take you along for the ride. The damage from the water spot in this occasion heavily outweighs the damage from uh, other factors as in swirling and scratching and uh, oxidation. Water spots can be a twofold problem with the deposit having to remove it chemically. Uh, so we did the wash, we did the decon, and now we're going to follow up with a panel prep just to make sure there's no protectant still on there. So any correction we do uh, will not uh, pull up into the pads, clog them, and make them less efficient. And now we're going to protect some areas since we will be quite aggressive with this finish, like the trim and the seals. Next step after the removal of the deposits from the hard water, uh, whether it's limestone or calcium, doing it chemically, we're going to have to mechanically remove the etching that is damaged underneath those deposits and can really etch down in through the clear, down into the base coat in some cases. This, this paint job, it's very close. We're deep down into the clear, almost down into... The base coat with that etching. Everything else is kind of topical. The scratches, there are some deeper scratches. We'll cover those in the second part of the series, how I tackle those. But the oxidation, the overall dullness, and the light love marks will be removed easily. And it's the etching that uh, is a little worrisome. Test areas, very important, and I always do three or four test areas to find the perfect match for this finish, not being overly aggressive, trying to get the work done with the least aggressive combination necessary when it comes to the polisher, the pad, and the correction fluid. So first, we're going to try the Lake Country Low Lint Pre-Wash Lamb's Wool Pad and 3D ACA 500 attached to my favorite rotary. What are the goals with this project? Well, to remove as many of the imperfections as we possibly can. So we're looking for a huge turnaround, yet leaving as much clear coat behind as we possibly can as well, because this owner is going to hold on to it for quite some time afterwards, and he's going to enjoy it. So it's the perfect balance of removing as much as we can and leaving behind as much as we can. And we have pretty much perfected that here at Apex Detail. I'm not going to concentrate on so much on how to use the rotary. I have plenty of videos that you can uh, view to, to learn that uh, part of the equation. But today we're going to concentrate on the results you can get from the rotary. You can cut and you can finish with the rotary. And it depends who's behind, behind the machine, how much experience you have with the machine. You can cut and finish better than any other machine that's available today with a rotary polisher. Listen to the machine. It's not screaming. It's under control. I don't have it on the fifth or sixth speed setting. Normally between the third and fourth, depending on what I'm working on, what I'm going after, and the circumstances. It's all subjective. We're going to remove the residue, and I'll show you what it looks like after this stage. Then we'll test the other two products and pads that I have pulled out in the other test areas as well. By the way, when I'm finished working an area, I will let the oscillation or the rotation stop, depending on what machine I'm using, before lifting the pad and the polisher from the surface. That will um, help care for your machines. They will last a lot longer, and it also saves the pads. There's a little bit of a trade-off when using the rotary polisher, although it is like a scalpel and it will cut a lot deeper, a lot quicker, and is a lot more efficient. You will have a little bit more work to do as the wool pads will 
uh, lint a little bit. You'll have a little bit of dust and a little bit of residue to clean up afterwards. And you'll have to check every seam and every uh, opening between panels, uh, opening the doors, the trunk, the hood, and then wipe down the corners. That first combination did well. Let's try the second. This is going to be Jess Car Heavy Cut Compound, and we'll team that up with a Lake Country Hybrid Pad. That is the blue one. There's blue and purple, which are similar. Blue has a little bit deeper cut. However, finishes down than some of the other wool pads, leaving less haze and a smoother finish. They also seem to lint a lot less. They're much denser, so there's a lot more material on the pad. probably notice the different size backing plates that I will attach to the rotary and that all depends on what I'm working with what I'm working on the size of the panel if it's a large flat panel I'll go with the largest backing plate if we're getting towards an edge uh, or a curvy area then I'll switch to smaller backing plates With the residue removed, we can come in and, and notice that there's a lot less hazing, but a lot less cut was done with this pad. So it's subjective. Keep in mind, this pad and combination might have worked on medium or soft clear coat perfectly, but just not in this situation. It all depends on what you're working on and the conditions you're working in. So let's move on to the third section, and we'll use the Sonax Ultimate Cut Plus, and we'll team that up with the purple Lake Country hybrid wool foam pad. Just add a quick tip if you're still not comfortable with the rotary, and if you're not, if you have a slow day, I really still do recommend picking up a bunch of junk panels from local body shops and set them up on a horse and practice. But if you're not comfortable yet, not 100% comfortable, you can lay some masking tape down on the edges of a door or a hood or the trunk here. That case, in, in case you come up and you ride on an edge, the pinstripe tape on the edge will not only help guide you, but protect those corners and edges just in case you hover a bit too long. This combination did very well, a little bit less hazing than the first section, a little bit more hazing than the second section, but it also cut just a little bit deeper, this combination here. So we can either go with number one or number three, and I believe I'm going to stick with number one because of the deep etching from the hard water spots. Now, I'm going to take that first combination and I'm going to start working on this half of the deck lid. I want to see what the panel looks like as a whole when I'm finished with this team. And we'll come in, we'll take a look. You'll see the top left corner where I was working. It looks very good. I mean, there are a few areas uh, we're not going to be able to chase after that are too deep. Some of the etching is just about into that base coat. We're not going to run the thin that clear. It's not going to be detrimental to the finish um, weeks, months, and years down the road if we take it that thin, even if we lay a ceramic coating on top of it. So let's take a little section and show you uh, just a step you can take to go a little bit further, cut a little bit more safely and effectively, and that's by using the wet sand method. We won't take a lot of time because I have many videos on wet sanding, but I just want to show you it is an option beyond even 
the rotary and its um, capabilities being a scalpel in your arsenal. Let me pause here for just a second or two. I want to bring you in close so I can show you something. Even after the test spot that we did with the rotary and a wool pad and some wet sanding, we can still see, let me pick out a spot and point it out to you here, the etching still runs deep down into the clear. So it's a uh, two-layer factor. The first layer will be the deposit itself. Could be calcium, limestone, could be anything really, but it also etches and eats down into the clear, sometimes even down into the color coat itself. Something to look out for and something to keep in mind. I'm going to do it, I will explain in the next video exactly what happens uh, and how it etches into the clear, so stay tuned. So at this point, we're now at about 90, 95% of the imperfections removed, just some of these deeper ones that we cannot chase after. And then all we need to do is finish up. And we can finish up with the rotary. That's going to be the next step. And we'll get to that in just a few seconds. The finishing stage is next, and that will take care of the slight hazing, and that's from the cutting pad itself. That's going to bring out the clarity, the depth, and the paintwork that we're looking for. Let me grab the swirl finder and let you see what that looks like. Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, there's still a lot of room for improvement. Even the shop manager is... Uh, not impressed yet, so let's get that final stage finished with the uh, M302. That is a fine finishing polish from Coach Kemi. We're going to team it up with a finishing foam pad. The pad, just need to adjust that to the finish you're working on. Hard, medium, soft clear coat. Sometimes on softer clear coat, the foam pad you may want to choose is a black application pad that they use to apply waxes and sealants. To finish, not a lot of pressure for me. I just like to guide the polisher back and forth. The polisher, again, it's not blazing on the six speed. Now, with a finishing polish and the finishing foam pads, it's not quite as important. You can turn up the speed on the polisher. In fact, to me, finishing, I have mine on the fourth, maybe a tick above the fourth speed setting to finish. That's a little bit higher than I normally use the machine for, but for finishing, uh, it really gives me the, the results I'm looking for. That again is subjective as to what you're working on, the conditions you're in, and what you prefer when it comes to a finish. This is where we're going to stand after the first two steps. Perfect, no, we're not chasing perfection. We can't. 
the imperfections run too deep. However, a huge turnaround, a lot more gloss and clarity because we're making the surface flatter. All of those imperfections were causing a very uneven textured surface. And that's what we're correcting here and the results that it's giving us. Well, I finished the whole deck lid and you can see for yourself. Not to pick my own work apart, but there's a little bit of solvent pop left over. Not much I could do about that. One, two, maybe three areas where the etching is almost down through the clear. But otherwise, uh, satisfied and we're going to move on. That will take care of this first video of the short series. We do have a lot more imperfections to uh, hit head on. And I'll share that information with you in the next video. I appreciate each and every one of you. See you next time.